In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how can you secure your online accounts like social media or your bank accounts using a local password manager. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Seth from CyberSudo. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and follow me on social media for more privacy hacking awesome content. Now, I would like to thank you so much for the wonderful comments that you leave on every video that I make because these comments tell me that you are liking the videos and encourage me a lot to do and put more effort on every video that I make on YouTube. So thank you so much. Now for the people who are new to this channel, I have a link in the description to get three things for free. The first one is an OSINT list that I have made that contains my favorite OSINT websites. And the second thing is a mini course on how you can unlock vulnerable cars. And the third thing is a mini course on how you can find w like a Wi-Fi password using OS X. All of this is going to be in the link in the description. And let's start our video. Now, there are two types of password managers. The first one is a cloud password manager. And the second one is a local password manager that you can install it on your Windows machine, Linux machine, OS X, or your phone, for example. Now, in my opinion, using a local password manager is much more private and secure than using a cloud service that stores my password. Because who knows, maybe this company got hacked and then the password got leaked. And even if they were encrypted passwords, the hackers have the ability to download them and then use programs or tools like Hashcat to crack these passwords. So that's why I think that using a local password manager uh, from an open source company is much more better than using a cloud password manager. And of course, this is only a preference. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how can you properly create your password database that includes all of your password and then how you can secure it so even if the hacker were able to obtain the file the database file and the key the password of this uh, file that he won't be able to log in or unlock this database and see all of your passwords all of this is going to be in this video and don't forget to like and subscribe and let's jump and see how we can do this All right, so the password manager that we are going to be using is called KeyPass XC. Now you wanna make sure that you download and install this version and not another one because there is an older version is also called KeyPass, which is this one. You can of course also download it, but I don't recommend it because I'm going to be showing you in the next video how can we or how hackers can crack and find the passwords of such databases. So you want to make sure that you download only this version. It's called KeyPass XC, and this is the latest version. So you can just click on it, download, double click, and then install it on your Windows machine. So this is pretty much easy. The second thing is after you download and install KeyPass XC is that you want to create a database. So here we have a database that I have already created, but I'm going to create a new one right now. So I'm going to go to database and then I'm going to say new database. And then here we're going to say the database name. I'm going to say like um, database for passwords. And then I'm going to say continue. Now, here we have something that is also very important in terms of security, which is the decryption time. This means how long have you have to wait after you enter the password. Now think about this because if the attacker were able to obtain this file, what he will do is that he's going to extract the hash from this file, and then he will try to brute force the file until he finds the password. And Trust me, like if this file that contains all of your passwords is unlocked, then the hacker would be able to log into any accounts you have like banks, social media, etc. That depends on what you have on, in the database. So like one second is of course good and it's okay, but 
you can increase it to five seconds. This is gonna be the most secure option. The second important thing is you wanna make sure that you have this format is the KDBX and then four because number three is crackable. So a hacker would be able to extract the hash from this file, but not from the KDBX four yet. Now, of course, in the future, like there might be a method to crack KDBX in the future, but for now, we don't have one. So we're gonna choose this option. So I'm gonna say continue. And now I'm gonna choose a password. Now, of course, you wanna make sure that you choose a very complex password that contains all characters, small letters, symbols, number, etc. So you can generate a password from here that depends on the complexity that you would like to have. So we can use th this password, for example. But in our example, we are gonna say just test one, two, three, four, because we will try to crack it in the next video. We're gonna see how hackers could crack such files and unlock them. So I'm gonna say test one, two, three, four, test one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna say done. And now it's asking us where would we like to save this database. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call it database and I'm gonna save it on my desktop. So here is it. And now it's ready. So now let's take a look at, around this um, database. Of course, you can add an entry, like you can say, for example, Amazon, and then you can add the, your email address and then the password that you have used it and then the URL of the website. And then once you visit amazon.com, for example, then the website or the tool will prompt and ask if you would like to autofill the passwords and then you can say yes and then you can log in automatically. So the second thing is here we can add or edit an entry, here we can delete an entry and here we can copy the username of an entry. So let's create an, in, a, an entry right here and then I'm gonna say for example cybersudo.org like this and the password is sad1234 then cybersudo.org is the website and then okay so if you would like to copy the username of this entry all we have to do is just to click here and then we have copied it as you can see here or we can copy the password here is the password and and here we can copy the url of the website cybersudo.org for example etc Now, one of the most important things that you would want to look at is the password generator. So once you click at it, you can generate the password. You can, of course, select what characters has to be included in the password and then the length of the password. So you can copy one and use it for your online accounts, for example. So the second thing we are going to do is we are going to go to settings right here. And then I have a note slot right here that I like to use, which are minimize window at application startup, which means that whenever your Windows sprint system starts, it will start in the background and it will not immediately prompt you to enter the password. So I like to check this option. And the second one is minimize after unlocking database, which means that the moment you enter the password of the database, it will minimize the window. So I'm going to enable this. Now, of course, these are only preferences that you can set on your own. This is only my recommendation if you would like to follow it. The third thing I would like to check is called backup database file before saving, which is right here. So it will save a copy of your database before saving the new entry. The next thing I would like to show you is how you can integrate the KeePass extension with your browser. So all you have to do is to go to browser integration and then you select the browsers that you have. In my case, I have Chrome and Firefox, but we will test this on Firefox. So I will check on Firefox and then I'm gonna say, okay. The next thing is I would have to install the browser extension, the KeePass XC browser extension on my browser, whether it's 
Chrome or Firefox that depends on you. So after you install it, you go and you will see an icon on the top right corner and then you click on it and then you say connect and here you can add any name you would like so I'm gonna say passwords for example and then save and now it's connected so what we're gonna do right now is that we are going to go to facebook.com for example so we will assume that we're going to log into facebook.com but because there is no entry then it will not autofill anything so there has to be an entry here but what I would like to do for example I'm gonna say sad at cybersudo.org and then the password is gonna be sad1234 then I'm gonna say login of course this is incorrect but I'm gonna say new which will create a new entry in my database with this email and password which means that the next time I would like to visit facebook.com this will lights up the icon of the key pass will lights up I will click on it and it will fill my email and password and then I can say log in now if you are trying to create an um, an account online then you can use the password manager to generate a password and then use it immediately in here and then say create an account for example now The very important thing that you should not forget is how can you secure this database because if this file got leaked or your computer got hacked and the hacker has copied this file to his machine the next thing he's gonna do is going to be extract the hash and then try and brute force this hash and we will see this in the next video now to protect yourself from this you have to use a two-factor authentication and with these databases the two-factor authentication is gonna be like a Yubi key or an only key so I'm gonna show you what I mean so when I'm talking about hardware security keys I'm talking about like Yubi key key or an only key so they are similar but with only key you can use multiple keys and here you can only use one key and we will talk about this right now now the cool thing about a YubiKey is that it also supports NFC which means that if you have a smartphone that supports NFC and you have a password manager and you copy the database that you have created on your phone and installed a key pass application or an app then you can use this YubiKey using NFC to unlock your database on your phone and without this key you won't be able to unlock the database now keep in mind that you need to provide a password and the device has to be plugged into your device and if the device isn't plugged in then you won't be able to unlock the password the password manager now the problem here is that if you have lost this key then you have lost your database which means that you have to carry it on all the time or you have to put it in a secure place so that you don't lose it now once you have the Yubi key or the only key the next thing you want to do is you want to go to database and then go to database security and you want to say add additional protection and then add challenge response and you can say refresh and select the key if you have one now let's test this out so if I went and locked the database if I try to enter the password without selecting the YubiKey key and say unlock then it's going to show me an error message and say invalid credentials so it's not going to tell me please enter your yubikey key it's going to tell me invalid credential which i think is much more secure than showing you you have to enter your yubikey key because if the attacker why we're able to obtain this file and he brute forced the password he got the password then he would know that you have a YubiKey key and the next step is to get the YubiKey key but if it showed you that the credentials are invalid then they don't know or they may just doubt themselves or the tool that you have used it to find the password so once we select the YubiKey that we have and say unlock then the database will be unlocked so I hope you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel 
and thank you so much for all of your comments and thank you so much for still watching this video until the end i will see you in the next video where we will see how we are going to find the key of the database that we have obtained